Hey guys, John with Mojave Trails. And in this episode, I'd like to introduce you to my 2023 Overland setup that I've decided to go with. Um, if you've been following along at the channel for a while, you know that for a couple of years, I've been talking about trying to figure out how I wanted to go about camping and overlanding uh, with the Mojave. And a lot of factors came into play and I looked at an awful lot of options. It took me over two years to decide. I didn't want to rush it. I had a budget and I wanted to get the most I could with that budget. Um, so in this episode, stay tuned, we're going to go ahead and get into the details on that. Okay, first of all, let me give you just a high level rundown of what I got here. Uh, this is a 2023 teardrop camper known as the Bushwhacker. And no, I didn't just buy it for the name, although that is a nice bonus. Not to worry, the heat gun is already on order and I will be removing those stickers and putting something else on there. But what the Bushwhacker has with it um, is it, it's a nice sleeping arrangement for two people, of course. I did install this eight foot awning. Um, I made a few little accessories for it, like the side table. And in the back, it has a nice gallery with a propane furnace. It comes with a K2 cooler, which is kind of the equivalent of a Yeti cooler. Um, it does have air conditioning, because we're on the other side. Uh, you, obviously, you need to be on shore power for that. It has air conditioning. It has a propane heater. It's insulated. The sides are all aluminum. There's no wood made in the construction of the, of the teardrop. It has one of the nicest doors in a teardrop industry. There's plenty of room to stand underneath there and cooking if you're in the rain. Um, that does a really nice job. I'm going to be making some side wings that you've seen on other teardrops to kind of help block the wind if it's a driving rain and wind. Inside I have it set up right now for single person in sleeping mode, but there are two mattresses that it comes with. You put them side by side and you can foot. It's basically six foot five sleeping height and um, you know, roughly a, a, a queen size, a little bit narrower than a queen size mattress. But it has a lot of cabinetry on the inside, a lot of storage space. Uh, it does come with a stereo and speakers that play on the inside and outside. Also, you can hook it up to Bluetooth. It's not the best quality, but it'd be easy to swap out the, the speakers. It has a nice fan also. Um, you do have to be hooked up to shore power though, obviously, to use the air conditioner and the fan. That's one thing I'm going to switch so that I can run the fan even if I'm not on shore power. Up front, it's simple. The trailer weighs 1,300 pounds, so it's light. It tows pretty easy. It has a steel frame. It has these all-terrain radial tires. Uh, when you remove, there's the spare tires underneath, but if you remove the spare tire, you end up with... Um, over 12 inches, 12 to 15 inches of clearance underneath underneath it. And that's plenty for the places that I'm gonna go with this. It has a 3,000 pound axle and a Timberlands independent suspension. So it rides really, really nice. Uh, down four service roads and, and simple off-road scenarios. Of course, it's it's not a Patriot camper. I'm not dragging this thing up a mountain or, or anything. Um, you know, it like I said, it's 1,300 pounds empty. And you know that 1,300 pounds is back is behind you when you're not on the road. You know, on the road, it's fine. It tows great. Going up a hill, though, any incline, that's going to just compound it. So I'm not a big fan of towing trailers uh, up trails. I like to kind of bush camp and then get set up in a scenario, and then I can have my Jeep as light as I want, and I can go ahead and, and overland just in the Jeep. Take the doors off if I want to, stuff them inside, lock it up. Obviously, I can take the, the freedom panels off. And I can be light and as nimble as I want to be, which I really, really like. Set this up to go out west. Um, probably, hopefully I can talk my wife into going with me. So it's a perfect setup for two people. You can take the whole family really if you need to, but you'd have to have a tent uh, or some other scenario. It does have a roof rack on it. Came with a roof rack. Um, not the best quality rack, but it enough for kayaks, canoes, Obviously to mount awnings and that kind of stuff, which is all I need it for. It's not heavy enough to mount a tent on it. If you wanted to mount a tent, that's not going to work. Also has hooked up for, you can see the propane. There's a propane there also. And I've got a 
adapter so that I can run my Coleman stove off of that as well. It does have the uh, not leveling um, jacks here, but to, to give you stabilization when you're all le level and set up. All right, next let's uh, get into why I bought this and the other things that I compared it against. And we'll talk about that. All right, let's talk about um, why I decided to go with a teardrop trailer and a camper in general and what, I, what are other things I considered. So I looked for a long time and when I first um, got the Mojave, I was kind of thinking I would go with some kind of a pop-up tent that would slide into the truck or a, or a truck camper. Kind of issues obviously you had with the with the Mojave or any Gladiator Tacoma is, is how much weight you can have with the 1200 pound payload and people gear taking up a good chunk of that. It was kind of hard to find an option um, that would fit within, you know, slide and camper was kind of ruled out at, right, right out, of, out of the gate. I didn't want to do a lot of modifications to the vehicle as I've stated. I, I like it stock for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, so the ones that I really considered was the AT Habitat. Uh, obviously the Alley Cab, I looked, I went and looked at one, uh, was really serious on one of those. I was pretty close to buying it a couple of different times, but it, I didn't like everything about it. And then the Harker EDC um, was the other one that I was really, really interested in and really, really was pretty close to purchasing. But uh, in the end, I went with the teardrop and, and let's just talk about those three campers for a second. The ha the Habitat, I really like the fact that it folds out. It's lightweight, it's 360 pounds, I think. Um, it folds out, you got basically 16 feet of interior space. So you could sleep as a family of four or certainly three people easy enough. However, the walls angle up. It's not as roomy as it looks when you actually go inside of one. Personally, if you're independent, if you're single, or maybe two people, it's fine. Uh, but I, but for a family of four or, you know, three people or more, I just felt it was going to be pretty cramped. And I wasn't sure about the tent canvas scenario. It's a lot of tent that you have there. The second thing when I looked at was the Harker EDC. And what I really liked about the Harker is the way that the tent came out in the back and you and you can take use the tailgate. Uh, for additional space, you end up with, you know, almost six feet of interior space, which is a lot. Uh, it, it's, it's really nice to have that additional space. Um, I really like them. I've, I've seen them. I've been inside of them. I, I like them a lot. They don't necessarily seal up as as tight as some of the other ones do, as far as the tent goes. I think there's some things that I've seen people do online, and, and maybe the, the new one has, they've done some some work to try to improve that scenario. But you know, again, it was nice and light, 340 pounds. I think that one weighs. Uh, and so that's a really, a really, really good option. I was really close to buying one of those as well. Starting at about $9,000 for a Gladiator. And then the Alley Cab. So the Alley Cab is by far the most solid of all those offerings. I mean, if you're traveling the world, you're a full-time overlander and, and you really want to build up your rig for yourself, that's a really, really solid option. Uh, it's They seal it really, really nice. You know, dust and air don't get in into it, dust and, and water. Um, it's lock, very lockable, especially when it's down. I mean, they all do a nice job as far as being locked, your, your gear inside. But when you're sleeping in it, you know, can someone get it at you if you're in a bad area, if you're a female traveler by yourself, you know, security, something you want to consider for sure. You might not be in a state. I happen to be somebody I do carry a pistol with me, um, but there's places I go where I can't, and that's fine. So being secure is kind of an important Thing as well and also animals when you're out in the woods i camp a lot in northern wisconsin we have a lot of bear predominantly bear that are going to come into your camp at night usually that's more because you didn't you know take care of your garbage or your food well but they will just come in and, and prowl around there's a lot of them um, the, it seems like the numbers are increasing what i didn't like about the alley cab you lose the tailgate and, and i'm i love the tailgate i need it for every day work I use it when I'm out camping and overlanding uh, normally I'll park the camper I'll back my pickup truck also and I'll have that as another work prep surface uh, so the tailgate is something that, that I absolutely want 
Um, also, I could no longer get a sheet of plywood in there. You're not easily taking, because of the way they seal it, you're not taking it on and off. Most of these scenarios are going to be permanent. I have seen where people have actually taken them off, but that's not a practical for me. Um, I can hook up and unhook a, a camping trailer in a fraction of the time that you're going to take any of those on or off. And then you got to figure out where you're going to store it as well. It's much easier to store this this in any number of situations. Just leave it outside, put a cover on it in the driveway or some, you know, land if you got it and you're, and you're good to go. In all those scenarios, you still end up with some kind of a tent structure. And, you know, tents are fine, but for me, I camp a lot in a lot of wind. We use it for hunting. In the fall, you got rain, you got bad weather, you got wind, you might have cold, it might be nine below. Tents just don't work. You don't sleep when it's windy in a tent. I don't care whether it's a clamshell or what style it is. You got fabric blowing around, you don't sleep. This is nice hard sided, insulated. You're, it's quiet inside. You got a little fan going if you want to have the fan. And I mean, I sleep great in a camp. And while it looks like a coffin on wheels, uh, it, it has a lot of other benefits to it. The other thing is, let's talk about what you get. I, I paid 11,200 for this brand new from the dealership. And with that, like I said, you, you get an off-road suspension, steel frame, timber and independent axles. I know they're not the greatest uh, axle for over, you know, an overlanding vehicle, but this isn't something that I need to take on super rough trails. But it certainly is gonna get to me to most of the boondocking spots I wanna go to. You've got a heater, a true Propex, um, I'm sorry, I think it's a Dometic heater on here, but a gas, furnace and it's 15,000 BTUs which in this little thing is going to blow you out of there. If you are camping where you have short power or you want to bring a generator along uh, when you're out west super hot you've got a, a air conditioning unit in here. You've got a full kitchen in the back set up. It comes with a cooler you know it comes with a, a cooler that's like a Yeti style you can easily obviously get a Bouge RV or whatever 30 basically a 30 liter cooler. It's got 12 volt. It's already wired for 12 volt. There's a 12 volt outlet back there. It, you can just plug it in and it'll run off of your car or the battery. You know, you can pick up a solar generator, whatever you want to get for your solar options. The RV is already plugged for solar. Yeah, it's a it's a cheap connection, but, it, but it'll work. It's simple and it'll work. It had the roof rack, so it's easy to mount the awning on it. It has a 24 gallon water tank. That's something people don't consider. On this little trailer, most of them 24 gallon water tank is a lot. And while they don't recommend drinking out of any of the tanks that store in a camper RV like that, I've got a filter system that I can run off of the hose with a quick connect and filter my water if I want to use that. I mean, for 24 gallons, heck yeah, I'm going to use, use that water. It came with a spraying hose, quick connect, disconnect. And the pump on that thing is phenomenal. You could shoot water 20 feet out of that hose easily. It's like a garden hose um, scenario like, like you have at home. So you can spray off your vehicle if you get, really want to. You can use a few gallons to clear your windows and stuff when you're out. If you're on trails out west, especially where it gets really, really dusty or you get some rain and you're all muddy, that's a kind of a nice option to have. Um, what else am I, am I missing here? So I think that when you look at the, and, and essentially, you pay for it, it's ready to go. Like you got the two mattresses, yeah, you got to figure out your bedding, whatever you want to do for that. You've got propane stove hookups, extra propane in the back here so you can hook up a propane fireplace if you're in an area that doesn't allow fires or you just don't want to have a, a natural fire, you didn't bring any wood with you, whatever the case is. Um, and you're, you're all in at 11,200 and out the door. And that's a 2023 model. It, it, it also, it has all the cabinetry and a lot of storage. There's storage underneath the mattresses. I don't have to modify my vehicle at all, right? I can just hook it up. It's already set. Needed to get a brake controller and that's it. And it also has electric brakes and, and you need a brake controller to use those. And I'm down the road. And when I'm done camping, I can park it and everything stays there and I'm ready to go. I can run light on the trails, like I said, when we get to where, wherever we wanna go. And it's a super comfortable, setup cooking out of this thing in the back is super nice i made this extra table i got four burners so that i that i can use with stuff that i already had 
in any of those other scenarios, you still have to add stuff to it. So, so let's say the Harker starts at nine thousand dollars. That's that's polite, right? So you you want to add any kind of storage or cabinetry in there? You got to either pay for that, which isn't cheap, or make it yourself. You're adding weight. You're going to have to update the suspension for sure. Your your rear springs are not going to be stiff enough. You're going to have to do something there. And so now you got to add the cost of whatever modifications you're going to do to it for your camping scenario. Um, You've got solar, you know, or, or a battery option, whatever however you want to run there. You got to purchase that. It doesn't come wired in. There's no water tank with that, so you got to either carry water, which you know a lot of people do, or get a water tank for that. Again, additional costs that go with it, and that's the same for all of them. And there's still this tent scenario, which is my biggest issue: is sleeping in them. I just don't sleep as well as I do in something like this. So that's kind of the high level on why I went with what I did. Um, you know, I'd love to hear your comments, what you guys think. You know, those other options, don't get me wrong, they're great. And I, if I was just myself, maybe a little younger and maybe wanted to get to a lot harder to get to areas, one of those scenarios would work fantastic for that. And you're probably gonna modify your rig anyways, so you can take that into consideration. That, that's one thing I would do if, you buy, if you're buying a new vehicle, don't rush to put a lift kit in it or, or any kind of suspension. Don't make that the first thing you do. Figure out how you're going to use it, drive it yourself for a while, drive it on the trails. Like I said, it took me two years to come up with this. Um, and and get that all dialed in, know how much weight you're going to have, and then build your suspension around that. Don't just throw a lift kit in because it's cheap or, or you got it for whatever the money is or a good deal, and it may not work for what you want anyways. So do your research. There's a lot of great options, especially on the Jeep platform. That's why I love it modifications you can do them yourself you can find a lot of places that'll modify them for you it's just a great 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 platform it's you know in the pickup truck or, or four-wheel vehicle uh, off-road industry it's they're as capable as, as you can get you can make them as, you know, even more capable for a lot less money than you can any other platform so that's my two cents on it uh, Oh, and the other thing I should probably mention, I meant to start with this up front, is, you know, my budget was 15000 I did not want to spend any more than that for everything. That included the equipment, anything I was going to take with me. You know, I already spent enough, over fifty grand for the truck. That's a lot of money into a, in a something that I'm only going to use, you know, half my time, not, maybe a month out of the year if I'm, if I'm fortunate to go that much total. Probably it's a few weeks uh, out of the year right now. When I retire, that might be different, but that's how it is now. So, like I said, 11,200, and it was ready to go. And all I had to do was add bedding to it, and, you know, obviously food, whatever I want to take that way. But I already had most of that equipment anyways. So I think it's by far the cheaper option. I don't think you can go into any of those other platforms for that amount of money and uh, be down the road like you can in this. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the trail.